Greetings! Well, the UK has had its referendum and the result was in favour of leaving. What next? Well, this is where it gets interesting. I mean, personally, I was in favour of remaining, but we made our choice. We now got to deal with it. We now got to make it work. You know, that's the way it goes. It was an important decision. We were told it was an important decision. You know, Opinions and directions were given by both sides of the argument and we live in the internet world where it's possible to, you know, do your own research and find out which bits of each side's argument hold up and which bits of each side's argument fall down. The fact that people seem to be having a bit of buyer's remorse in the aftermath Even as someone who isn't happy with the result, that's what happens when you make an important decision. You're supposed to think it through and you stick with whatever the results are. That's just the way it goes. And, you know, besides a whole lot of this, especially for the, a lot of the people in favour of leave, it's because, you know, of some, you know, national pride, you know, pride in being British. Well, I might not be the most, uh, you know, nationalistic person in the world but to me a key part of being British it's our sense of humour it's our resilience it's the fact that we take whatever crap people throw at us and we might bitch and moan about it but we get the job done it's sort of what we do we complain we take the piss we make things work you know that is to me what being British is. So if we've made a decision that may or may not prove to be a long-term mistake, but certainly has got some short-term ramifications, the British thing to do is to stick it through, to make it work and to come out on top at the end. Not to turn around and demand a recount or another vote or, I mean, I don't think any of that would work. Now, there's a petition going around online at the moment about if there is a less than 75% turnout and I believe less than 60% majority that a second referendum is called. And the petition was opened before the referendum thing is it's still ongoing and it didn't pick up momentum until after the result was announced if it had gained popularity beforehand as in significantly beforehand maybe there'd be a case to be made for it if it had been discussed beforehand and maybe if that was state you know if that had been agreed and stated as a rule beforehand you know you know, there would be some strength to it. But at the moment, it just seems like a turnaround. Like, we don't like this result. Let's keep asking until we get the answer we want. Well, when does that end? You know, what would it take? 90% turnout with a 90% um, you know, result. And anything less than that is too close to call. Because, well, it's not what we want. And then, oh, well, it's gone the other way. It's not what we want. And it's obviously close, so it's got to be absolute. But it's not going to be that clear cut. There are some places in the UK where it's very strongly remained. There are some places in the UK where it's very strongly leave. And on balance, it is that sort of vaguely evenly matched. But that itself is an important result. You know, it tells us that people don't necessarily think that the EU is a disaster, but they also don't think that the way things are is ideal either. 
that tells us the direction that we need to go in. And OK, yes, now we're the ones who, you know, we've got to knuckle down. We've got to try to make things work for us. But that's just the way it's going to be. The other thing is, especially with there not being the possibility of a second referendum clearly established before the first vote went. Well, the, the problem you've got with that is that's not what. Well, that's not what other people were making decisions based on, you know, political, financial decisions, all that kind of thing. The short term instability that's just happened. You can change the overall result, but you can't change the initial aftermath. We've just stepped on a lot of toes. We can't unstep on those toes. We can't go, oops, we didn't want to do that. It's like, you know, it's like if you're, um, you know, you're showing off somewhere and you overbalance and you twist your ankle. Been there, done that. Regretted it immediately. Knew I should have made a different decision. But I had to deal with a knackered ankle for a while. Because there are, you know, there are some decisions that you can reverse and there are some decisions where you just can't. And that's what we've sort of done in this position. You know, we have sent out a message to Europe and to the world and we can't unsend that message. You know, that is something that we are going to have to deal with the uh, responsibility of. You know, if the rest of the world is a little bit arsy with us for a while, well, that's just the way it's going to be. I mean, that's the way it was always going to be. You know, I've talked to people with a reasonable viewpoint on leave and who gave some very good arguments towards, you know, not the ones that the campaign were doing, but, you know, some well thought out ones and who knew that stuff like this short-term financial instability was going to happen. It was a calculated risk, and also it was an inevitability that was seen as being worth the pain for the long-term gain. And that is at least what some of the Remain, Remain campaign were trying to say. Is, Look, the, you know, in the short term, there is going to be upheaval. And in the short term, you know, we might not necessarily be making too many friends on an international scale. You know, it wasn't necessarily saying that this is why. Well, OK, in the case of the Remain campaign, it was this is why we should remain. But certainly those in favour of leaving should have been thinking in terms of, OK, if this is going to happen, is it worth it? If this is going to happen, what do we do to make sure that the consequences aren't too bad? And what seems to have happened is that people are now surprised at what's happening. Because, you know, because the whole world's been caught on the back foot. Well, like I said... We deal with it. We made a choice. Maybe it was a mistake. Maybe in the long term it will actually turn out to be better in the long run. Either just for us or maybe even for Europe as a whole or the world as a whole. You never know. It's not impossible. We might just have made the best decision going. Doesn't change the fact that in the short term it's painful. I mean, you know, come on. Take stuff like moving house. That's chaotic in the short term, but if you live in, you know, a pokey little studio flat and you are then moving to a three bedroom house, there is definite benefit. Doesn't stop moving house being a pain in the arse. If you've got a broken limb that's set badly, you get the doctor to break it and reset it. That's going to hurt in the short term. The end result is you end up with a straighter arm. Um, you know, many other medical uh, treatments, you know, take uh, take chemotherapy for cancer, uh, for example. Um, as far as I'm aware, the, the side effects of chemotherapy are very, very unpleasant. But when it's successful, the benefits outweigh the short-term pains. Because 
someone's lifespan can be drastically increased from you might be dead in a few years to you are probably going to be alive for a good couple more decades. Doesn't stop the short-term effects of the medication being pretty damn crappy, but the short-term effects being pretty damn crappy do not stop the, it being worth the risk, especially when it pays off. And, you know, that's, I think, the situation that we're in now. We've opted to straighten the knackered arm. And we've just had the break. And like with any pain, if it's bad enough, the rest of the body gets affected. And, you know, in this case, you know, Europe and the rest of the world, you know, there's a little bit of overall upheaval. When everything sets fine, could well be fine. But we've got to grit our teeth and get through this bit. You know, we can't go, oops, shouldn't have done that. Let's vote the other way. Because if you've just broke, you know, if you've just broken the arm to have it straightened and then you go, actually, I don't like this pain. I'd rather have the arm crooked the way it was. Well, it's too late at that point. So, yeah, you know. It's just the way things are going to have to be. And, you know, we've got to make, we've got to stick with the decision. We've got to make it work. It's not going to be easy, but we can't just turn around and say, oops, we can't do that. I mean, if nothing else, that, to be honest, would actually put us in a weaker position at this point. You know, trying to change our mind would be bad. Now, having said that, <clears throat> there is one other thing that was very clear from the outset. The referendum is an advisory. You know, it's not the same as a regular election where the results are legally binding. It is an advisory measure. The government do not necessarily have to act in any particular way. But a government that doesn't listen to a message that basically says there's about half of the population that really aren't happy with the way things are going, that itself isn't necessarily good anyway. They can't just kind of go, well, it looks like um, it looks like leaving would actually be worse, worse off. So actually, despite the fact that about half of us have decided that we want to, we're going to stay. It's like, no, no that's also not sending a good message. But it's an advisory. When you get advice, you take advice on board. It is now down for political debate. They need to be talking through, from a purely polit political point of view, the pros and the cons and why people wanted to be in, why people wanted to stay, what the what the effects in various areas within the Europe and even just within the UK, with Northern Ireland and Scotland being, you know, more heavily towards wanting to stay in the EU and you know stuff like that. We can't sweep the result under the rug, but it doesn't mean it can't be discussed. You know. Maybe there's a way that after discussion we can find a way of going, well, maybe leaving's a bad idea and maybe we can negotiate something without pissing off the rest of the world. And maybe not. Maybe we are committed to this path. But again, that's what the post-referendum political debate is for. <clears throat> you know, we as a people have told the government our opinions. They now have to discuss our opinions. They don't have to act on them, but they do have to consider and discuss them. So, you know, but whatever ends up happening, the closeness and the variation in the result is something that has to be taken on board. You know, if suddenly the government go, well, it's not legally binding, so we're going to stay any, after all, they've got to do it in a way that still reflects the fact there's an awful lot of people who aren't happy with, you know, the way the EU runs things and the EU has already said that there's no more leeway for discussion and in fact 
a vote for no has taken the discussion that was done earlier in the year off the table. So maybe we're back to step one and we'll have to accept more than we otherwise would have if we wanted to stay, which might actually make staying less viable because what people were voting on previously is now not an option. So it's a mess. But we've got to deal with that. We can't just turn our back on a decision because it seems to have made things a little bit messy in the in the short term. That's what decision making does. That's what making a yes no decision where it's you know, where the debate is polarizing does. We made a choice. We've now got to figure out how to see it through. Personally, I've got no clue. I'm not a politician. There's a reason for that. You know? I'm just a ranty middle-aged man who bitches and moans about stuff on YouTube. And knows how to fix computers fairly well. I'm not all bad. But, like I said, I'm a techie, not a politician. It's now up to the politicians to figure this stuff out. And we'll see. But, regardless of the fact that I disagree with the result... The result is the result. You know, if your football team loses the match, like a penalties or a last minute goal or something like that, it's like, yeah, it doesn't change the fact that your side lost. You can complain about it, but the result's the result. So we've got a result. And whether it's the result that you wanted or whether the aftermath of the result is what you wanted, It's a result that we need to run with, or at least it's a result that needs to be given full and proper parliamentary discussion. The coming weeks and months and potentially years are going to be quite interesting. But we'll see. As an aside... I've just got a job. I start this coming week. Vlogs and other website content is likely to slow down a little bit, especially in the fairly immediate term. But it ain't going to go away. I have too much fun doing this stuff. Besides, talking on camera has been a big part, I think, of what's help my confidence when speaking it has helped me in my interview techniques it's mean I've not got as nervous as I would have used to and I find it a little bit easier talking and you know that's a skill I'm still going to need to develop because I'm still not great at it I still need to develop it I still need it for work and this is a fun way of me being able to develop my communication skills. I can't see myself giving it up anytime soon. It's just things will slow down a little bit. You know, it will probably be more restricted to really passionate subjects or really, really kind of big events happening. But content will still come out. Pay attention to the blog because, again, it's easy for me to draft stuff. Hell, I can draft stuff on my... Uh, Lunch break on my iPad quite easily. Um, pay attention to the podcast feed. Uh, Robin and I are in discussion to try to get back to a more regular recording schedule. If for no other reason that we're just having general chat on Skype more often. So it's a lot easier for me to... Well, I don't have to kind of say, hey, let's do a Skype call. We're in a Skype call anyway. And also just pay attention to the uh, Twitter feed because I will always, you know, put out little things that I find interesting and you never know, you might find something worth reading or, you know, some cool video from someone else that I find on YouTube or interesting blog articles or stuff like that. And again, the gaming. I do intend, obviously, to keep playing video games and I therefore do pay attention to the stuff I put out there as well. So, yeah, this past week has basically completely changed the world. The UK has um, decided maybe to go out of 
Europe and I've got a job. And the SD card on my audio recording device has just keeled over. So with that, see ya.